Syracuse. Um, what is unique about Leo Beck Haifa? Well, what's unique about us is that we are a school, okay? Uh, we are a community center, and we are also a, a, um, a shul, okay? A synagogue. Uh, our school has 2,300 students from kindergarten, or from, sorry, from reception, as you say in the UK, up until um, year, 13, year 12. Um, and it's considered one of the top high schools in the country, as our students will maybe help us understand in a few minutes. Um, it's also the only reform school, officially full reform school uh, in Israel. Um, and we're very proud also we have a program with students with high functioning autism spectrum disorder that are integrated into the school as well. We're also a community center uh, with a sports center and with enrichment activities. And we do a lot of work in Western Haifa around helping populations in need, um, new immigrant refugees, uh, immigrants from Ethiopia, in addition to doing very unique and special activities, building bridges between Jews and Arabs, like I mentioned before. Um, and we're a progressive synagogue. Congregation Ohel Avraham is one of the largest reform synagogues in Israel. And so we like to say that we're a school, a shul, and a pool, if you put all those three things together. And for those of you who visited, you know what I'm talking about. And what is unique about Leobek is the intersection and the interaction and the harmony that we create a, amongst a, these three elements. So for example, a, on a Passover, the student body of the school will organize with the supervision of the rabbi. Uh, she is a graduate of our high school, Rabbi da uh, Nama Daphne Kellen, for Holocaust survivors that are connected to our community center. And that's one of the many examples. Now, we're not only located in Haifa, but what's important for me to stress before we move on is the impact that we have throughout Israel. Um, we've calculated that we have some over 8,000 alumni uh, for numerous generations uh, throughout all of Israel. And the first reform Israeli rabbis are graduates of Leobek. The One of the most recent ordained rabbis is a reform rabbi who's performed more weddings in a year outside of the rabbinate in Israel than any other um, a community, uh, any other rabbi. Um, and we also have uh, people who have succeeded in all sorts of fields, uh, excelled, in all sorts of fields who are graduates of, of Leobeck, and that's really the way we can have impact, not only in Haifa. So Mark, that was a little bit of an introduction. Um, you, may, Mark, when was the last time you visited us here? My last You're time um, at Leobeck Center was probably about uh, three, four years ago. Uh, I've been many, many times. Um, and at some point, I might share a little bit why it's uh, been such a big part of, uh, of my life and my, uh, my Zionism, to be honest, as well. So, uh, yeah. So just so you get a sense, um, this is one of our buildings. Um, and when I talk about maybe one thing that's really uh, symbolic of, of the Leobeck School is this tree of life that exists in the middle of this building. At the top level are six branches, which, of course, commemorate the six million that were murdered in the Holocaust. But next to that is our Beit Midrash. And the Beit Midrash, that house of study, during the day, students have Jewish studies classes there. In the evening, adult education. Um, if we go all the way down past the library level, past the primary school, down to the bottom where the roots are, we have our sciences programs. As some of you know, Israel is the startup nation and so much of technology is coming out of the work that we're doing. Um, and we're very proud to have one of the largest physics programs in the entire country, and especially proud that more than half of the physics majors um, are young women. And the last thing that I wanna show you to give you the teaser to come here is this, um, I guess, what would you call it? Like a vitrage? Yeah. Yeah, it's a vitrage that was put here. And I apologize, I don't know the artist's name, but I really should. But it's really talking about what we're symbolizing is changing Israeli society and the world through education. So if you look here and through the past, the present, and the future, so and through our values. So this is in the shape, if you can see it, of the, the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Um, in the little squirrels in the middle, um, there are verses, sukim, from all different traditional Jewish sources talking about 
justice and tikkun olam and tzedek. And finally, for those of you with a little bit more of imagination, if you look closely, the spiral in the middle resembles the DNA. And the idea behind that is that we need to be able to work and progress with the advancements of science, but we need to do it guided by our morals and our values. And that very much, and that's the last thing I want to say right now, speaks to why we need a place like Leobek in Israel. And to tell you about that is just to tell you what our founder believed when he founded the school. Dr. Rabbi Meir Elk, who was a student of Rabbi Leobek, um, founded our school 82 years ago. So we're older than the state of Israel. And he believed three things that once I tell you, you'll understand the essence of Leobek. One, he believed that if you wanna bring reform Judaism to Israel, you have to do it through education, not through synagogues. Not that we have anything against synagogues, but the average Israeli will, unless they're defining themselves as Orthodox, generally won't go to a synagogue because they speak Hebrew, the Jewish holidays are our national holidays, but if they wanna learn about things, they'll do it through education. The second thing that Mayor Elk believed, Rabbi Elk believed was that the school has to inspire in their students a sense of respect and awe. We look at that as kind of the spiritual dimension, but that there's something more than just the material and students should have respect for the environment, respect for other people and an awe of the beautiful nature that we'll see in a second when we walk outside. And the final thing that Rabbi Elk, Dr. Elk believed was that the school has to instill in its students a sense of responsibility and the courage to take social responsibility. That's why probably more than any other school that I've ever visited in Israel, and especially at the graduation ceremony, you hear the phrase tikkun olam over and over and over. And it's unusual that secular or self-identifying secular or not, or, uh, Orthodox Israeli kids know so much about the importance of tikkun olam like our kids too. So um, I'm not alone actually here. There are three people <laughs> here with me. So we're going to take a risk here and go outside. So we might lose the internet for a second, but we'll be fine with that. Um, and we're heading outside of the Lake building and uh, going out into the, pia the, the piazza or the patio here at our Leobuk campus. Opposite where I'm showing you now is actually the high school building. Okay. We're going to see, hopefully, the synagogue, which is up in that direction. And for those of you who really want to believe uh, me about the fact that we're also a community center, we um, are right now above the swimming pool, which is where the community center is. Okay? Um, and this, of course, is the coast in Haifa. Uh, can everybody still see and hear me? Are we good? Yes, we're great. Thank you very much. All going fine. We can see the Mediterranean. Okay, excellent. So right now we're going to get an opportunity to meet three of our students who've taken their time out of either studying for matriculation exams or going to youth movement meetings or God forbid having some fun. Um, <laughs> and they're gonna each introduce themselves um, and then we get a chance to ask them some questions. Okay, so we're gonna start with Aya. Hi, my name is Aya. I just finished 12th grade because it was my last exam. Benji, I'm going to need to ask you to take the microphone a bit closer to Aya, please. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to repeat that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, oh, hi, I'm Aya. Um, just 12th grade, it was physics and computers, and I was a part of the Student Body Council. Of that, I'm in a youth movement here in this. Sees it all with Leo Beck? Yeah. I was in a station with Lovic, both from the physics department and both as an ambassador program. Which ambassador program was that? It, was, it started in the in middle school and continued to here. It's with the Ministry of the Foreign Affairs. Okay, and where were you? Where did you I visit? Went to Bulgaria. To Bulgaria. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Aya. Hi, uh, my name is Adas. I'm just I just finished the eleventh grade and I'm going to the twelfth grade. Uh, my majors were uh, diplomacy, art, sorry, biology and diplomacy, and I am in the Israeli Red Cross. I volunteer there. And Have you been overseas yet with uh, Leobek? Yeah, I've been to a like, delegation uh, in, in in London, Limud. You went to Limud? Yes. 
Last year or the year before? This year. This year. So for those of you who don't know, uh, thanks to the generosity of the Michaels, those of you who might know them, we send every year, the second year in a row, we've sent a delegation to Limud. And it's a great opportunity. Not only do our students experience what you can only experience at Limud, but they also teach and talk about what it's like to be an Israeli teenager. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Maya Osher. I just graduated in uh, fifth grade. Uh, my majors are biology and physics. Um, except for that, I also. Uh, community service. Uh, my okay. community service this year, I'm a counselor at the, the Mashatim. It's a youth movement. It's kind of like the Scouts, similar in, in some ways. Uh, also, I take part at the project of Tikva uh, Israeli, Israeli Hope. Um, it's basically uh, a program that started by uh, President Rivlin. Uh, he broke the uh, Israeli society for a couple of uh, sectors, and each sector has his own um, education program and the goal is like to bring them all together and um live peacefully i guess and also i um i also been to limud this year uh, with adas and it was an amazing experience thanks to uh, leslie and leslie Mike. so we're going to start here with with, with uh, maya maya you talked about this program that president rivlin initiated dividing israeli society into four tribes yeah. what are the four tribes um okay there is uh, ultra orthodox haridim yes um uh, seculars secular israelis arabs israeli arabs okay who uh, some israeli arabs. israeli arabs and the th and last said, one i don't really know up to define. so modern orthodox yeah. or nationalist orthodox so let me start with a question in terms of leo beck as a jewish school mm -hmm. which of the four tribes do we fit into Actually, I don't think we fit into one of them. We don't. Why not? What is Leo Beck's goal in terms of Judaism, do you think, as a student here? Um, it's, by the definition, it's reform. But mm -hmm. everyone here has the chance to be what they want to be. So there are also Druze and Arabs and Christians and Jews, Reformed Jews. I mean, you can find almost every kind of uh, group of people here. So it's it's basically not only um one uh sector okay so it's it's list or it's accepting yeah, of the differences definitely. can you describe maybe a jewish experience that you remember that you had here at um, uh, at leobeck yeah. that was well, meaningful for you in your jewish identity i i do remember uh, two experiences um the first one was when i just came to when i just came to leobeck and um, we had a, a camp to like meet each other before we go to high school so um we had a kabbalah shabbat there and we all were um wore white clothes and we sang together with the rabbi of which is our city, the, the leobeck education center and it was amazing and we all it, it was really like with this experience, we also made new friendships, and it was... Was amazing. that the first time you experienced a Reform Kabbalah Shabbat like that? Yeah, and also after that, a synagogue in the school, and I was shocked. Wait, synagogue in the school? Yeah, we have a synagogue in the school. <laughs> oh, okay. And I, I know it, it's not so um, common here in Israel. No, but wait a second. All your friends at their other high schools, they don't have this camp? Nope. They don't no. have it, and they don't have a synagogue in their school? Nope. So that's unique to Leo. Yes, definitely. Okay. And right. also, this was the first time I went to an, uh, a reform synagogue. Right. So, I, I mean, I usually went to um, Orthodox synagogue. So when I first came in, I, I started to search for the woman part. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to, to sit there and they were like, no, what, what are you talking about? Here we, we all together. It's not, it was, I was shocked in a good way, definitely, but it was it was amazing we, and again the singing part it's really amazing like bring us all together okay great hadas can you share with us like a you know a meaningful <laughs> jewish experience that you've had here um, at leo beck yeah just as maya said uh, i've been as well in, in like a jewish kabbalah shabbat in, in the synagogue and sorry <laughs> Yeah. Um, good. and it was really empowering to see everyone sitting together women men children just sitting together and singing from the 
bottom of their hearts, believing every single word they're saying. And I'm used to an Orthodox like ceremony. And when I came, we sang songs that are not from the Torah or just things that are related. Some they found to be related to the text. Like modern Israeli songs that yeah. speak to the same topics yeah. as the pr traditional prayer book. And it was so easy to understand what they're talking about. This wasn't all like old fashioned Hebrew. It was, you could understand what they want to, you to understand by, from the song. Amazing, yeah. okay, thanks. I, do you have anything you wanna? Okay, I was gonna share also, then we'll move on to the next question. One last thing, Ted. In the 10th grade, we have Jewish studies and <laughs> matriculation exam yeah. and i remember how we could always challenge each other and the teacher about what we we're studying like it was never nothing was set in stone everyone could have their own opinion on it and their own inter interpretation of it and it was one of the most amazing things like i could never before and just challenge a teacher like that and it was amazing like the way people here a little bit take their judaism and how they interpret it and how everyone can have their own way it was amazing in my opinion. So I'm gonna move for a second and show the camera back down on the slope of, of the Carmel where we are in Haifa. I want you all to think most of the cities that you know, the beachfront, is that the higher, like more exclusive lucrative property or is it the more lower socioeconomic areas? The truth is that in most cities in the world, the beachfront happens to be you know, the more lucrative or higher real estate value or whatever. Here in this part of Haifa, in the Western part of Haifa, it's a little bit different. The neighborhoods below us are actually lower socioeconomic neighborhoods where a lot of the new immigrants from Ethiopia and from the former Soviet Union were absorbed into Israel. And what's interesting is that when Rabbi Samuels, Rabbi Bob Samuels, Alava Shalom, who built the Leobic campus into what it is today, it chose and fought the mayor to get this location. He did it because he knew that in order to do social action in Tikkun Olam, we needed to be located on this particular location. So on the one hand, we're close to the Upper Carmel, which is more the middle to upper middle class parts of Haifa. At the same time, near the other middle to lower class parts of Haifa, so we can really be relevant to everybody, which is why we have such a wide and large impact every year. And speaking of Haifa, um, one of the centers that is part of the Leobeck Community Center program is called the Clore Center, um, which deals with shared existence between Jews and Arabs. And I've heard a rumor that, it's not a rumor, but that, that Haifa is a mixed city and it's not uncommon that on the bus you can hear Arabic and people don't turn the head like, oh, what's that going on? So maybe have FMV and you wanna talk about uh, what's it like to live in a shared city? Or uh, also Maya mentioned, we do have students that are not Jewish here at Leobeck. What's that experience like? And is it true that people call Haifa the island of sanity in Israel? Or is it just a, 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 a slogan? Um, okay. Who wants to start? Okay. Um, so my neighborhood is next to an Arabic neighborhood. Uh, so we share like the same neighborly bass and stuff like that. And I see, a lot of people that are Arabic next to me and stuff like that. And it's it's not weird or it's not uncommon and people don't turn their head from the Arab people or we share the same ba bath, we help the same people. If someone needs help, for instance, on the bus, everyone comes and helps no matter if they're Jewish or if not. And in our school as well, we have tons of kids that are not Jewish and they're not treated differently and they're equal to every other Jewish student in our school. Maya? <laughs> I completely agree with this. I mean, I live by a neighborhood that most of the people there are uh, ultra-Orthodox. So I don't really get the chance to like meet them on a daily basis, but I do have an uncle who is uh, uh, ultra-Orthodox. So, um, about that, I do think Haifa is, is a mixed city, but also we have kind of a, separ a separate uh, neighborhoods. It's not like completely mixed, but it's it's legitimate and it's completely fine. But I do think in the future we will be more uh, mixed and involved with each other's life. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I hope those of you who are watching, if you have questions to ask our students, that you'll get an opportunity to do that because they really, they are very happy to have the opportunity, even though they can't see you, they know that they're interacting with people from overseas. And it's really a part of our education at Leobeck to give our students a sense of peoplehood and that there are partners, uh, reform Jews, uh, Jews with values, liberal values like ours in, in Jewish communities uh, overseas. Okay, so uh, Benji, I thank you so much to Aya and Maya and Hadas for, for being with us and for what you're sharing. Um, I'd love to open this up at this point for an opportunity to speak with you guys. Um, it is so special of you to give us this time and I think we are just so full of admiration for the quality of your English. It is unbelievably good um, <laughs> because I think our Hebrew, our Ivrit, Zeloto. <laughs> um, I have a question. So one of the things uh, some of the, the participants here may be wondering is when do our teens get to meet Aya and Maya and Hadass and other students at Leah Beck, because this is an extraordinary way of meeting Israel, of course. And indeed, what we're doing, Benji and I, is trying to work out ways that that, that encounter absolutely will happen with our youth centre, with our clubs, etc. Um, and I've actually been sent a... One of the problems for our teens today is for most of them, we're in the last week of school. So they're actually still at school, I'm afraid. One of them has sent a question, a girl called Lizzie Wall, and anyone who was at Shabbat service last week will have seen her older brother and sister actually were reading the Haftarah. And her question is this, on social media here in England, I see so often when there's something about Israel, loads of my friends do a don't like, or they will do a like for something which is pretty nasty about Israel. I got a problem says Lizzie, I want to be better informed to understand both sides of the arguments and also to be able to speak up for Israel. But how can I deal with it? I'm only 14. She, she says, you know, this summer, unfortunately in Britain because of COVID, our summer camps aren't gonna be happening. All sorts of things aren't gonna be happening. And that may be what she would have done. What could she do? What would you say to Lizzie, 14, here in Britain when there were people are being nasty about Israel on her social media? Um, I would suggest that she would, I would suggest that she will like try, tell those people to go check Israeli newspapers that are online. And then there they will see what is really, what's going on in the Israeli side of the story. And then they won't only hear one side of like the side of the Palestinians or what is being reported in new, like in the England news or stuff like that. Because from what I know, there are a lot of like biased stuff in the news. So if they will go and check the Israeli news, they would see that it's not exactly as a report. I also, I wanted to say that even if you're just 14, it's ne you're never too young to care about world justice and to care about things and always educate yourself. I would just go and read as much about the facts, as much as you can find. I'm sure there are many facts in English. I have friends around the world that have the same problem as you. And I find this problem with myself because also on the Israeli side, also on the Jewish side, it's very hard to find just pure facts and not things that people think or as she said, biased. And I think it's just very important to read from many different resources, as many as you can find in facts, and you're never too young to start caring. Yeah, I, I think, Rabbi Mark, I would also add that our students are really interested in interacting with your students. And that goes to your question. We can interact with you by obviously face-to-face -face visits. When we come to the UK and you come to Israel, we can interact with you online, um, both symmetric and a we can have online encounters and meetings with your students. And also we've done programs where our students prepare text discussion and videos and then interact through text discussion and videos with groups overseas. And the other thing is, is I think, uh, I forget who mentioned it, Aya maybe, but mm -hmm. that we send kids who are young ambassadors and summer counselors. Mm -hmm. um, and so our kids actually, and we supervise them academically, can prepare information about Israel and uh, your 14-year-old should know that if she tells people about the Leobeck Haifa story, 
then she can say Israel isn't what people think it is. It's a place that are, there are shared values here. Yeah. So I hope that answers you. your, your question. Thank you. Now, Cynthia has used the chat function to put her question. So Cynthia, do you want to read it yourself or would you like me to read it? Well, thanks, um, Rabbi. Yes, yeah, sure, I can read it. So I had one question for the um, students. It was interesting to learn about how they enjoyed the Kabbalat Shabbat and so on. And I wondered if the students have found they've become more observant in Jewish traditions since joining Leo Beck and whether they have a greater interest in Judaism. And then I had a second question about the sciences, but maybe if you want to take the first one. Thank you. So, so let me, I'm going to, Cynthia, I'm going to add, the, so the question is, is based on your experience, like going to Kabbalah Shabbat here, do you think that has made you want to do more of that kind of stuff and observe more Judaism? Or has it made you just begin to ask questions about defining your Jewish identity because it's something you've taken for granted? Or like what? Okay, who wants to answer? Maya. Um, I think um, that, um, when I started, we can't hear you. We need you a bit louder, Maya. So sorry. Um, yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, before I went to Lebeck, I, I, I know that I took things a little bit more for, like for granted, and I took my Judaism as like um, not something that I choose, something that came from my family, and I should like keep the legacy and uh, to to um, bring it to my children. And, in the future, but when I came to Lebec, a lot of questions about my Jewish identity came up. Um, I started to uh, think maybe I want to be a reformed Jewish, maybe a Jew, maybe I want to be like uh, collaborate the um, reformed Judaism with my uh, Orthodox Judaism that I brought from home. And I think uh, that for now I'm still searching for my specific Jewish identity, but it definitely brought me so many questions and I think I'm still definitely searching the answer. By the way, one other option that one of you might say is, is that for me, Judaism really is more about Tikkun Olam than it is about yeah. Kabbalah Shabbat, which is also mm -hmm. because part of the problem, Cynthia, that we have in Israel is that a lot of people identify social action as if, oh, that's universal, it's not Jewish. Mm -hmm. And we all know that Tikkun Olam is an integral part of Judaism, and part of our goal at Leobek is that our students understand that. So who wants to add anything? I think that in Leobek, one of the most amazing things about the Judaism that is presented here is that it's shown in many different ways. Like Benji said, like, it's not only, because I know for me, like, I don't, I don't like particularly agree with, like, find myself, you know, of the traditional Kabbalah Shabbat and everything, but I definitely, I love seeing how my morals come through a uh, Jewish identity. And it's something that I was shown here at Leobik and was able to explore throughout what I said before, also throughout the classes and just throughout talking to all of the rabbis that are just around school. And I think that's one of the most amazing things about the Judaism that is presented here is that you can take it wherever you want, like with yourself, as opposed to like the Orthodox Judaism that I was more presented to before, and that is just like it's like setting stones. Make a point here. Our role at Leobeck is questions and needs. I'm going to say something now, and I want you to look at the our students' expression. Okay, <laughs> you ready? So one of the students, to just like them, came to Leobeck many years ago. She came because it was a good school academically. Today is one of the rabbis here at the synagogue. Okay, and Rabbi Nama Daphne Kellen. Now, if I said to any of you, would you imagine yourselves one day being a, re a reform rabbi? I don't know what they would think, but it's even the considering the possibility is part of the revolution. And, and the, the, the reform movement in Israel tries to create programs and not enough people attend those programs. The reason that not enough people attend those programs is because not enough people feel the need. Leobek graduates feel the need. And wherever they go in Israel, we know they're going to try to access some way of connecting. We don't know what it might be, but we know that they'll have that drive to connect and be involved in Tikkun Olam and in their Jewish identity. Thank you. Our, thank you so, yeah. thank you so much. Um, now, uh, Cynthia's got a second brilliant question that I guess we ought to just ask if there's others who who have a question they would like to ask our three interviewees. So. Uh, 
Um, anybody have a question you'd like to put to, uh, to, to Aya, Maya and Hadas? Or to Benji? At this point. Okay, so let's go to Cynthia's second question, which I thought, again, very, very relevant to what we've been learning today. Thank you, Rabbi. So I, I was very, obviously very interested to hear that about 50% of students who are majoring in physics are young women. So it's obviously very, very, very encouraging. And I wondered how much does that, does that continue then through university and onward into careers? To get more women to actually get into sciences for, for their profession. So I don't know if we have those statistics. Um, and also you have to remember in Israel, between high school and university, we have this experience called the army. Um, <laughs> but, um, I, um, you know, I think we try to liaise with the Technion here in Haifa and with Haifa University to certainly give our young women the vision um, that they can do that. But actually, um, so I don't know if we actually have statistics on that, but I could check back to you. But I think your question, helps me lead into the, an important question, which is, even though there are three different ages here, what are your plans after high school? What are you doing? Okay. So we'll start with, with so, the IS who's closest. I'm, I'm starting in a week and a half, I, I got a year of service, which is, we take one, we postpone the army in a year and we just do volunteer work or in different programs I'm doing in the youth that I'm in. And I don't, I don't know where yet, but somewhere around Israel in communities that need help. And after that, I'm either going to be an intelligence or a combat unit. Intelligence or a combat unit. And it, maybe, Cynthia, this relates to your question. Aya, what's your opinion about this discussion in, in the Israeli media about should women have the uh, opportunity to serve in every unit, no matter what, as young men, or should it still be separate? Well, for me, I know that I... I went through a lot of trouble in order to be able to do a combat unit because I had some problems with my weight, but um, I truly believe that women can do anything they put their minds to and that they should be given the opportunity. I'm not saying that they should have lower standards in order to join the combat units, as some people are saying, but I believe that if we can match the same standards, standards as the men are able to, we should be able to join any unit we can, any unit possible out there. Um, I, I have another year before I the army, but straight after high school, I want to go to the army. I don't want to do a gap year like I had done. Um, and yeah. Do you have any idea what you want to do in the army? I do. I think I want intelligence or something like seeing what's happening and then deciding what you do with that information or stuff. Like really doing stuff to make sure that our country is safe. Okay. Um, I still have two years left, yeah, okay. um, at least, and I'm thinking about doing a, a community service here uh, overseas, maybe with the Jewish agency. Thinking about England as well. Uh, it's the, what she's referring to the Shin Shin program, if you've yeah. heard of it. So yeah. she wants to be a Shin Shin in London. It's, it's, a, <laughs> yeah. it's a counselor there, right? It's like being a counselor. Hugely welcome. Come to us. <laughs> we have a wonderful Thank youth you. club. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, I do. Um, oh, I'm the army? Gonna, oh, okay. About the army. I think I want to do uh, as well as Adas and uh, Aya, uh, the, maybe in the, in the, in the intelligence uh, uh, part or mm -hmm. uh, how do you say Yeah, yeah, it's uh, fine. Okay. A job like in the intelligence <laughs> and that's what I'm thinking about. You do something that important and that will be able to that I will be able to give back to my country in some way. <laughs> okay. Um, Mark, I also wanted to ask the students about their experience during the COVID-19 lockdown, or is there another question that you'd like to ask? Okay, so let me just again, let me check with everybody. But yes, I mean, we can see that all of you are, have come to school with those masks. So <laughs> we guess you're right in the middle of it, still in Haifa. Um, and uh, but first of all, let me just check if there's any other questions that anybody has before we go on to that issue, which is what's going on um, with COVID. So, Jeff, yes, please let me bring you forward, unmute yourself, and off you go. You're, you're still muted, Jeff. Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> muted now. You've got it, you've done it. But we got rid of national service, I think, in 1958. 
do they find it daunting that after they've been through their schooling, they have to go into the army? Thank you. Um, well, I first am in the uh, me personally, I like it and I, I love it because first of all, you go out of a 12 year system and then you, you go straight to another system. So you're not like kind of lost and you have, you know what your plan is, you know where you're going. And second of all, I think, I think it's a privilege that I get to go to serve my country and I get to do things that will make sure that my family and friends and loved ones are being safe. And I really, really <laughs> excited to go to the army and I, I really can't wait and to start my service. Is it wow. completely different, so, a completely different attitude, I think, to what, what we had. I think a lot, a lot of them were, were dragged screaming. <laughs> <laughs> There's another, there's a, there's another element, uh, Jeff, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's another element. So let me, I want to ask a question and an expression. How many of you guys think that Leo Beck is a bubble and how much not? <laughs> a bit of a bubble. It's a bubble. Okay. It's a, Leo Beck is a little bit of a bubble, but what's interesting here is, is that, and the army is a bubble? No. 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 One of the, one of the roles of the army in Israel is, is what we call socialization. Yeah. Where, and, and we're still not only a small enough country, but it has to do, and as you can hear from my accent, I wasn't born here. I made Aliyah to Israel some 30, almost seven years ago. And one of the things that I really like about Israel is the community nature of the country, for good and for bad, okay? Yeah. But we're like one country that's a small community, and everybody's each other's hair and everything. But anyway, <laughs> but, but you really feel connected to your country also through this being leaving the bubble of your high school yeah. and knowing that you're going to meet Israelis of all different socioeconomic levels and all different, much more diverse than as Maya was talking about how diverse Leobic is, and it is um, more diverse than your average Israeli high school, but even the more so. And I think there is a desire to, to feel a connection to your country that mm -hmm. still exists um, 72 years later, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, for us. And that's why also there's this motivation um, and times have changed. Years ago, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the main thing to do the army was to volunteer for elite combat units. It still exists, but if I'm correct, most of the young men and women here are looking for either intelligence or cyber. Or because Air Or Air Force. We, we are, okay. All right. of, yeah. Know. And there's, for those of you who've heard of the 8200 elite um, kind of think tank unit in the Israeli intelligence, there have been years that a third of the third of the participants, so the people in A200, were Leobic graduates. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a couple. It was a year like that. So, yeah. yeah. So it's a big element throughout it, and it's and um, and so yeah. So I hope that answers your question, Jeff. Thank um, you. Stephen is always so polite and uses his hand raising gesture. So can I ask Stephen to bring his question forward, please? Thank you very much. Yeah, my question is that I, as far as I know, I have no family in Israel, which can create problems. For instance, uh, I was uh, a volunteer uh, with uh, Sorel Welfare Volunteers for Israel, and which meant that I worked on an army base uh, up to Thursday. The base then closed and re we regrouped on Sunday. So from that period, from Thursday to Sunday, I had nowhere to go. I didn't want to treat Israel like any other country. Um, but I wanted a, a, a reform uh, experience. Uh, can um, the the centre at Haifa offer accommodation for a short period of time, or, or, or could they give advice? I think that's the question. We we certainly can help direct you in the right direction, and we do have families that host people here, so you can consider us your family now in Israel. <laughs> so, so, but yeah. we, as long as we have planned in advance, Sarel, uh, Volunteers from Israel is an amazing program. My dad actually did it. Um, and definitely we're of open arms here. Can't host all of you. Cause I heard you, <laughs> I heard your congregation is a big congregation. Is that right, Mark? That's right. There's three and a half thousand of us, but actually what you were just saying, I know the truth of this, 
so two young women from my previous congregation who are 19 were going to go to Israel and they wanted to do something meaningful and Leo Beck not only hosted them they actually managed to find them an apartment which they thought was a total thrill um, and they worked in one of your uh, Jewish Arab uh, summer camps um, this was a couple of summers ago um, and uh, what's really great is it's had a huge influence on them and one of them um, who is Angelica Levy is coming back to Israel for a year experience now um, and her friend Georgia again and I think they feel that they've got a much broader view of Israel than they would have had if they got themselves stuck in Jerusalem or somewhere like that actually. So I know you mean it Benji when you say it. <laughs> yeah absolutely. So do we, Mark, do we have time for the question about COVID-19? Because I want to make sure we make it to all Avraham before the hour ends. I think so, yeah. I think the COVID one, it'd be good to hear about because, of course, we all noticed that the three young women were all had their masks, at least on their wrist, if not on their face. Um, <laughs> what's going on? How are, you, how are you coping in Israel as we're trying to slowly open up a bit here in Britain? A lot of us are very worried about it, especially in the generation you can see on the screen. Okay, how is it to learn online and how is it now? And so it was a pretty crazy experience, at least for me, finishing and graduating online. It was, it was crazy, but the classes went really well. I spent most of my of the time during COVID 19 volunteering. Like, I wasn't, I was outside. We were doing a lot of charity work with organizing food, bringing it to seniors who couldn't leave the house because of the lockdown and the whole situation, especially during Passover, since the holiday comes around, there's also a lot of charity work. So everything came together. Um, but Lewek was amazing. Like so many different projects were going around for Holocaust Remembrance, everything all together. And all the classes and exams went online, but it worked perfectly. Like I personally don't feel like I missed any material and um, I'm really, glad that I, we were one of the schools that could continue working these times and for me it was it was a crazy experience but i'm kind of glad that we went through it because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity there you go that's that's how you turn uh, lemons into lemonade <laughs> that's for sure okay um i personally enjoyed being quarantined i liked being <laughs> i liked being at home like taking things easy, talking with my friends. Um, of course, I did online studying and tests and everything went smoothly. And I volunteered in a thing that our school invented that we would call a few seniors in our community and we'll talk to them every few days to make sure that they're all right and if they need something and just to know that they're still like people still, ah. <laughs> Sorry, people still think about them, although it's COVID and everything is horrible, but yeah. Um, well, I agree with uh, Adas and Aya. Um, okay. um, as well as any other school in the country, we uh, started online classes. And it, I think there are a lot of uh, different opinions about it. For some, it went great. For some, I mean, it's not so good. Um, for me, most of the subject, it was amazing. It, actually was even better in some, uh, <laughs> in some subjects, maybe. Because um, we, we get to do more uh, to, uh, more material from the... Uh, These are kids who like school. So yeah, I, mean, I don't know what to like say. We like school. We like yeah. studying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, also we did in my uh, English class, we did a Zoom lesson with the uh, another Jewish school in uh, somewhere in the United States. I don't completely remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the east coast of the United States. Yes, and it was actually amazing. I don't think we would do that where if, if we weren't in quarantine. So it actually was an amazing uh, opportunity. Yeah, it's all about turning lemons into lemonade, I think. <laughs> well, you know, so, actually this session with you guys is similar to that because who would have thought a couple of months ago of, come on, let's go to Haifa for an hour and actually just talk to each other live. Um, so it's wonderful. All right, so we're going to say thank you so, so, so much with the fist bumps, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but um, from all of us, I think I'm we just going to head... unmute ourselves yeah. to say to Abba, to, uh, to Aya and Maya and Hadass. We really appreciate you being here with us. Yeah, very much. Um, <laughs>
Come on, everybody. Bye. 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 And the hot slack half every day. Okay. So I'm I'm heading. I'm gonna head into all of Raham. Bob Benji's walking just to tell you the whole of the Lebec Center is all on one hill. Um, so, and you're always going up and down and up and down and up and down. And uh, he's there, we are. he's just uh, shown us. Yeah, so the up, down, up, down. We'll take another second. So he also knows he may have the Mark, same. If you want to maybe take this opportunity to mention about your connection, because I have to go. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, Lierbeck Center. So, Lierbeck Center. I've been to many, many, many times, and it all started for me, kind of family-wise, because my uh, great uncle Max Salter. I don't know if anybody here ever knew him. Um, he was very. He was one of the founding members of Wembley Liberal Synagogue, um, but he was also very involved in that change that began to happen in progressive Judaism in the UK from effectively non-Zionism or even anti-Zionism into pro-Zionism. And in 1963, he came to what was then the Lierbeck School in Haifa with a delegation at that time from what was liberal Judaism. And uh, they got to the school and saw that Dr. Elkin's students were still doing the washing by mangle and by hand. And they thought, this is ridiculous. And uh, so all the people who came clubbed together and bought a washing machine for the school. And that was the foundation of a group called the Friends of Leah Beck, which is still going on now, more than six, uh, nearly 60 years on. But effectively, what it was, I think, that made a big difference to feelings about, uh, about Zionism at that time was an understanding that, this was a, that Israel was a place also where our Judaism could thrive, but we had to invest in it. We had to make sure that it worked. And that's why it's always a thrill to me to go to the Lierbeck Center because what it's become is quite extraordinary. Um, and I think he would be absolutely amazed. He passed away about 20 years ago. Um, and also to hear some of the attitudes that we just heard and the way that it has an influence over the whole system. So that, that's why I'm always so interested in it. Um, and uh, also when we go into the Ohel Avraham Synagogue, anybody who's been there kind of run, yeah. will recognize a few things. Um, Benji, how are you doing? Uh, I'm trying to get there. Fine. I think he also has the challenge that I sometimes have with our lovely caretakers at EHRS, which is they tend to lock doors they don't need to lock. <laughs> so when you think you're going to be able to just walk into somewhere, they've locked it behind you because you only you were there an hour ago and presumably nobody wants it now. Um, so Benji, warn me this could possibly happen. Um, I'm sure he's getting there. Let's sit, let's follow his progress. How's he doing now? Oh, he's gone. He's into the dark. He may be having a problem also with the phone signal as he gets a little bit out of uh, the outside and uh, to the top of the hill. Um, but we'll see. Um, see if it's coming back. I hope it will be. While, we're, while we are waiting to find ourselves in the synagogue, and he probably will then reconnect using the, uh, the, the signal of the center itself. Um, just has anybody here actually been to Haifa um, and been to Lierbeck Center? So Brian has, yeah? Anybody else ever been? Uh, we've been to Haifa and we've stood where you are now looking out over the, and it was incredible. Mm. incredible. It's a we've done that. beautiful <laughs> sight. Um, on the, where I am pretending to be, yes. um, on the right hand side here is uh, Akko. Uh, sorry, over there, Akko. that's Akko. There we are, just there. And in fact, this- All right, Mark points out to the shrine of uh, the Baha Ula um, in Akko. Uh, so the whole thing is oriented deliberately for that reason. Anybody, yeah. uh, so a couple of people, so Brian's also been there already. Brian, wh what was your occasion that brought you to the Abek Center? The World Union Conference, I can't remember the year. Was it 2003 or so? Yeah. I don't remember the year, you were there as well. All right. Mark, I don't know if you can hear me on back though. 
Oh, right. He's back. Okay. So, so Brian's been to your place in 2003, he says. Um, and we've got well, a couple of people have been to Haifa, but most people haven't. Um, so hopefully this will... Been to Haifa, but not to, the, not to uh, there. And he's been to... Great. It's beautiful. Yeah, been to Haifa, but not to there, Beck. Yeah, you're lovely. Okay, how are you doing, Benji? Um, I'm personally doing fine. The doors are not doing very well. Right. Because uh, apparently that was uh, opened up all Avraham and then whoever else uh, closed it, um, which means that that's going to have to remain a teaser. <laughs> yeah, for another time. In addition to, yeah, as a, for another time. And I think it's okay um, because there's so much to talk about in all Avraham. Because Rabbi Samuels, Alava Shalom, who built the um, synagogue, took so much care into the artwork um, to be so symbolistic of so many different values connected to Jewish history and the Holocaust and to social justice and to creating a venue of spiritualism, that it's almost worth thinking about dedicating you know, a session to really talking about that whole element. And I could even include a video of Rabbi Samuels that we have uh, you know, of him, um, you know, describing it. So I don't want to, I like to be on time. And I know we said we would keep this in the framework of an hour. Um, and I'm, and there might be someone on a way with a key, but by the time they would get here. Yes. Um, so I don't want to hold, hold up the time. And I do respect everybody's time. And this, and I want to say something, Rabbi Mark, um, we've, we've had an opportunity to do view, to do a few sessions but the number of questions um, asked and both have the opportunity to hear questions from all generations was something that is, was very special. And I'm really, uh, I can speak for the young women and myself, we're so appreciative of um, your community for this opportunity to connect. And we hope it's the beginning. And we really appreciate your taking the time to be with us and to think of the, and ask us the questions. Cause when it's that kind of a dialogue, it's just so much, uh, they're fruitful and better for everybody. So Benji, just um, while we still while we're still here, we've still got a couple of minutes. Is there any questions that anybody else has here about anything to do with this aspect of Israel? Also, Benji can answer for Israel in general. Um, any issues at all you would like us to take up for a moment? Um, There's thinking going on. There. I, I'm quite concerned about. Yes, Avraham. Aha. Is there a key? Mafteach la Beit Knesset. A key for this. No, he doesn't have a key. No. So, sorry, go ahead, please. I just wondered how the hospitals were coping in Israel at the moment. So, listen, a, statistically, we are not seeing uh, a, a really significant spike in the number. Whoops. Oh, dear. So from that point of view, um, from that point of view, the hospitals are still holding up. And, um, you know, we're in this situation right now where we're all waiting to hear that we're going to have a second lockdown, um, although we don't know if it's really going to happen. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, we, hope it, we hope it doesn't happen, but uh, we're in this situation where it might. The hospitals, as you know, Israeli hospitals are always, a readily prepared for um a readily prepared for um a, for emergencies and and oh, oh. <laughs> uh, mark i think we might be in luck i put up it all over huh that's where they have the kiddush when they're not outside <laughs> Okay, Mark, we're in. Right. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so, this is the synagogue where, when Maya walked in for the first time, she started looking where do the women sit, because <laughs> she'd never been in a reform synagogue before. Wonderful. And um. I mentioned when we were speaking before of some of the symbolism. This, um, you can hear me? Yes, we can. A little bit of breaking, but we can just about hear. You need to go back a little bit for us to see that completely. 
Lovely. Okay, it's now better. Yeah. It's yeah. Very old. I mean, it's from one of the camps. Okay. Okay, so the Torah scroll that you can see to the left is actually sitting on a piece of a rail that was taken from one of the rails in the trains that. Okay. Not have a clue. Okay. Uh, we've lost you. We've lost it. Yeah. I can tell you a little bit though. The uh, that near Tamid uh, was uh, donated by Southgate Progressive Synagogue. Um, it's beautiful. It's basically three birds flying above the uh, above the light. I love their ark. It's gorgeous, mm. isn't it? It's very beautiful. It's lovely. It's very lovely for a small ark as well. Mm. And the window to the right, if you've ever been into Aleph Synagogue, is very much of that yeah. style because it's the same artist, um, Roman Halter. Uh, Roman Halter. Well, folks, I think, oh, gosh, Benji, is he, oh, Benji's back. I think he's moving again so we can hear him. Okay, I'm going to stand still. So above the Aron HaKodesh, you can see the, the doves by the Ner Tamid. Yeah, we can see it. And then these amazing stained glass, yes. also a design here of hands. Mark, I know you know more mm -hmm. about the... The, the symbolism of the stained glass than I do. Yes, when you got when you went a bit quiet, to uh, just explain that it was by the same artist, Roman Halter, who did the windows at Aylis Synagogue. Right, and then here are also the um, candlesticks by the same artist. So we did succeed in the end in giving you the opportunity to have a glimpse into our mm -hmm. into our Beit Knesset, into our synagogue. And I hope one day to be in <laughs> London with students to visit yours and that you will be here to visit ours. Absolutely. I must say one thing, Kabbalat Shabbat at Ohel Avraham is really a beautiful experience. Very, very musical, as, uh, as the young people were saying from the rabbis there. Um, one of the people who'd been rabbi at Ohel Avraham was Michael Marma, Mike Marma, um, Dov's son. Huh? So uh, there's a lot of connections around there. Um, I think because we've now reached uh, just past three o'clock um, or five o'clock for you, we're about ready to say goodbye to Benji. Uh, just to say that my intention uh, in concert with our Culture and Heritage Committee and with those who have been part of trying to make sure we have some great Israel activity in our shul is to build on this. One of the things we're going to do is Rabbi Ofek Meir is going to be part of a panel on the second day Rosh Hashanah um, so that we can talk together um, and hear a bit about... He's the head of all of Leobik. That's right. He's the head of Leobek, absolutely, the, the principal of the whole centre. Uh, but also uh, no stranger to England. He's been many, many times. Um, and also, as I said, we're going to try to find ways of getting our youth to connect, because you, as you could see, that could be extraordinary. Although I have to say, uh, the articular, <laughs> articulacy of 15 to 17 year olds at Leobek Centre is absolutely extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, and I give our kids uh, good luck in actually being able to hold their own in a, in a debate, but I think they do. Yeah. Um, so what I'd love to do at this point is to say for you, Benji, if you wouldn't mind turning the camera around so we can say goodbye to you and a major thank you to you. Thank you so much for a delightful hour. And from any, everybody here, please unmute yourselves and let's say a thank you and leave yeah. for all of and, uh, oh, and, and oh, oh, soon. So thank you oh. very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Thank Girls you. were fantastic. I feel I have a suntan already. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Next week thank you. Thank, thank you, Mark. Cassie Shahar from uh, Leobet College Library. Next, uh, Leobet College Library and she's going to be speaking about why the library looks after books that are 16th, 17th, 18th century. What's that all about? Why put money into that? Why is it worth preserving old Jewish manuscripts in our college library? Um, and of course, it's Leobet College, Leobet School, all these, and Leobet Center. This is also shows how our hearts are connected in so many different ways. Thank you so much, Benji, for your time today. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Bye. Keeping this open so the live stream catches up.
We're also going to put a recording of this onto our website so that we can use some of the things that were being talked about, especially by the young people for educational purposes, etc. So I think, uh, yeah, no, the live stream hasn't yet quite caught up, but it will. <laughs> if I turn it off now, people don't get a chance to say goodbye. On the live well, stream. How many were there on the live stream? There were another eight people. Mark, <coughs> it's Eric speaking. Hello, Eric. Um, you know, we don't have an Israel committee anymore. We used no. to. And that's something that we should think about. And uh, we can talk about that as well. Absolutely. In some ways, I have to say, I am trying to inspire that we really do that as a shul, partly by sessions like this and people saying, like you, especially council members, like you, this has got to be a, part of a new, newly rebuilt part of our shul. Absolutely. But it was also so interesting to have questions from our young people about the issues that they're, of course, dealing with, which is how do they talk about Israel? in environments where it's tough to do and i i think part of the trick is connections with people like the young people at Lear beck who can talk about israel in a way that really relates i think because they're living some of the same life and some of the same experience but we'll, we'll see oh, yes i that, also that have problems right, mark, mark. I also have problems talking to people online, um, members of the Jewish community who belong to Jews for Britain, Jewish, Jewish Britain. Mm -hmm. um, and they recently put something on about, um, they put a picture of um, Laura 